Okay, my name is Abidemi Olonira. I'm originally from Lagos, Nigeria. I moved to Houston about 12 years ago. Generally, I think uh, I'm very influenced by the, you know, uh, traditional African art. And I'm also like influenced majorly by contemporary African art. And uh, since moving here in Houston, I've also been you know, exposed to the African-American culture, which is uh, so fascinating. And there's a lot of similarity between that culture and uh, the culture back home. I get inspiration a lot from, you know, the everyday life. I, I walk around and, you know, see buildings, see nature, and those serve as uh, my inspiration. And uh, also, I, I am able to tap into, you know, my beginning, where I came from, and what I've been or who I've been from then to now, to be able to create my work. So uh, my inspiration a lot comes from nature, I'll, I'll say. Yeah. Why do I do that? Um, I, I think when I was a year old, I had uh, polio. And uh, I, you know, I was basically, you know, remained uh, or I, I couldn't, you know, do what, you know, a typical kid would do, you know, and I was, you know, just laying down most of the time. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I was rejected, you know, in the hospital that my grandmother took me to because I grew up with my grandmother. And she was told to take me home that I'm not going to make it. So she took me home and uh, uh, nursed me back to life. So one of the things, uh, my grandmother is an artist uh, in the African sense of it. You know, she, she did so many things while I was growing up. She was once a pottery maker. She uh, does tie and dye. She... Um, she she does you know so many you know tri uh, I guess traditional things you may call them uh, when while I was growing up so I I see her doing all those things and those things always you know uh, remain you know part of me so uh, being uh, a child that had polio I started you know um, uh, you know just taking different things and you know putting them together and. You know, before I know it, I was, you know, making collages and I, she gave me pencils, you know, because I was all mostly by myself. So she gave me pencil and paper. So I was do the stuff on paper and I started drawing and, you know, people, that was about the only thing that I do and people, you know, actually like. So I thought I was, you know, it would be something I would do. And I actually didn't know I would be an artist until I came to the United States and I enrolled in uh, college as an art major. I see myself and, uh, and being a storyteller, it's actually you know, something that is rooted deeply in the African tradition. So uh, uh, the storyteller is actually somebody who is just conveying the story. They don't own the story. So I don't, I don't think I'm, you know, my art is something that I own or you know, that I have any uh, possessive, you know, power over my work, you know. I'm just the media, the media in which the work are being conveyed. So, uh, yeah, I definitely believe there is an higher power, you know, and if, if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now, and I, would, I wouldn't have been, you know, to all the places I've been to, you know, doing art. So I, I believe, you know, as human, we, we, we are sent here, you know, by the Creator, God, you know, whatever, however, you know, people prefer to call it, you know, to uh, deliver a certain message. And, and that message for me is to create art. So I definitely believe in eye power. Well, I'm going to first talk about how I came into, you know, using leather. Uh, I think uh, a year into, or a year before, uh, finishing my undergrads, I started working with a, a guy who eventually became a very close friend of mine. Uh, and uh, I was making, it, it was a factory where we make uh, gun holsters. 
and we make them with leather and um, we we will you know cut out the oyster and we'll have this remnant of leather and they just have this really beautiful organic shape so w w with the leather the way i choose them i uh like for instance the piece i'm working on right now i'm creating a background and a foreground so i i sort of you know dye the the leather on one side uh, in some instances, I, I will die, I'll have to dye them on both sides, and they are each uh, each letter is dyed individually, you know. So uh, uh, I, I, I can spend like you know a month, you know, just dyeing my letter. But of course, not a month. But I can spend a long, quite long of long time, you know, dyeing the letters. And uh, depending on the the project I'm doing, you know, I sometimes dye them in. Uh, like for instance, the, the previous project I've done, I had to dye the leather black in the front and white on the back. And uh, when the work is being displayed, there's a, a projection on the back and the white part on in the back is where the projection goes. And through the gaps of my leather, there's like a beautiful, you know, just uh, uh, light, you know, just penetrating through to the other side and to, you know, whoever is standing in front of it or, you know, to whatever is, you know, around it from the projection on the back. And uh, it's, it's just amazing how people, you know, respond to those, even, even though it wasn't, you know, it was just, you know, I, 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 I'm telling a certain story and the story is really just the piece and the projection, but, you know, you know, sort of included the the audience as well because they they felt like the projection you know penetrating through the letter onto them makes them become part of the piece so that was that was quite unique you know